Hey everyone, it's been a while since my last uh, YouTube video and I thought that today is a great day to break the silence. Today I'm with the one and only legend of legends, biggest bodybuilder in the history of bodybuilding, uh, Ronnie Lightweight Baby Coleman. <laughs> yeah, <buddy. laughs> I'm just saying that because uh, I want you to know that uh, it's a huge honor for me mm -hmm. and it means a lot to just get to sit with you and talk to you just like that in person. Uh, yeah. it, it is something that I can cross off my bucket list, to be oh, honest. I always uh, dreamed about it. Just so you know, the pledge is all mine, my friend. <laughs> I enjoy talking to my fellow Ukrainian bodybuilders, because I think Ukraine are some of the best people in the world. And the few times I've visited there, I've had the most awesome experience of my life and I always look forward to going back again. Nice, I'm so I glad to hear that. It's a wonderful time there and people... When was the last time you've been there? Probably the, 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 the last time, yeah, when you were there, yeah, yeah. And I had an awesome time and ever since then I've been looking forward to going back again but I hadn't had, had the opportunity yet but I'm hoping, you know, once the war is all settled and everything gets back to normal, I get a chance to go again. Yeah, so we'll, we'll be we'll be so glad to meet you there, and I'll go from Los Angeles and accompany you there. Yep. And, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll have a great time for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Ronnie, there's been a millions of videos with you on YouTube and mm -hmm. different platforms, uh, sometimes with the same questions. So uh, I thought that uh, I, I wanted to ask you something something different, probably. Um, it's all good. <laughs> for me, it's. The most interesting thing is the champion's mentality. Uh, there is a lot of bodybuilders. Yeah. There is a lot of motivated people. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think uh, you had that no one had to stick to the meal plan, to stick to the training plan, and to make it really happen? Like for so many years, like eight titles. It goes back to you know I did a seminar earlier this thing called passion. I had the greatest love and the greatest passion in the world for bodybuilding. And I started when I was 12 years old. Hmm. I started lifting weights at 12, fell in love with it probably about a month later. And I've been in love with it ever since then. Never, ever, ever have I stopped lifting weights since I started when I was 12 years old. And I try to tell people it's something that I look forward to doing each and every single day. And I've been at it for about 46 years now. And I still have that same passion and that same love for it. And I still look forward to doing it each and every single day. I never, ever thought about bodybuilding as a lifestyle because I was having so much fun with it and I loved doing it so much that I would have done it regardless of making any money. Yeah. Just kind of like what I'm doing now, you know, I don't compete and make money from it anymore, but I still train six days a week, every body part twice a week, and I still look forward to going to the gym each and every single day. That's great. So that 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 was my uh, edge that I think I had on everybody else out there. A lot of people were doing it for the money. Some people do it for the fame and the notoriety. I was doing it for the love of training. and the yeah and the passion that I, that I had you know for training each and every single day. So you had this passion, yeah, that, yeah. but at the same time, don't you? Your era is probably like arguably the best or the strongest era in bodybuilding. And you had crazy lineup to compete to. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I don't want to put anyone down, but do you think <laughs> that uh, Kevin had less passion or I don't know, Dorian had less passion or Flex Wheeler had less, they, they, all the top guys, you guys all like crazy about bodybuilding. You guys all love bodybuilding. So is it just a matter of like a, a size of this passion or like 
I want to tell you, <laughs> it's hard to explain, but what really separates you out from them? What, what is it? I, I think it was the passion. I wanted it more, and it's the passion. I, I talked to Flex Wheeler one day, and he's like, man, I can't wait <laughs> until this bodybuilding shit is over with. Cause I, he was getting tired of it? Yeah, he, he was like, I do not like working out and training like that. He's like, I'm just doing this for the money. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, and as far as Kevin goes, um, it's kind of hard to say about him because um, I, 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 I remember people used to tell me, man, Kevin took off from training, man. He, he just looked like a normal guy. And he don't even train at all. And he would do this for like months at a time. Mm. The only time I ever did that was when I, after I won my, you know, second Olympia, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm killing my body. I'm, I'm tearing it up. I'm beating it up. So I need to lay off so I can last longer. Cause it had I, you know, just been hardcore for 12 months. Mm. I don't. I don't think I would have lasted as long as I did, you know. And you know that it, it finally caught up with me. You know that's how Jay beat me. But you know I was getting old too. And you know it's only so long that you can really stay on top. But I was trying to last as long as I can, could by just taking off. And I, I hated doing it, but I, I had to do what I had to do to make my career last longer. But I sense. never looked forward to. Stop. taking off and, and yeah. stopping basically it's the purest definition of the uh, passion yeah, like exactly. when, when you got nothing behind this passion yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I, I, i'm gonna be honest with you i, I truly think that that was my age because i look at some of these guys now chris and flex and kevin they don't They don't train no six days a week, you know, you know, doing 45 minutes of cardio and dieting all the time like, like I do now. They don't do that because that, I think that passion thing was my edge. Got it. And, and you know, I, I use that <laughs> yeah. to get the upper hand on everybody. What was that, like, breaking point that changed it all for you as an average bodybuilder? to a top bodybuilder or Mr. Olympia. Like, you were competing quite a while before you made it to the top. Exactly. What was the biggest change that made you step up? I got this question today earlier. <clears throat> this guy asked me to give his son some, uh, some, some key, uh, <clears throat> key uh, thoughts about how I... Uh, what would make his son uh, be great at, at what he, he was trying to do. And I just told him, man, knowledge. Everything is about knowledge, and knowledge is power. The more you have, the better you're going to be. I thought I knew everything it was to know, you know, at a certain point in my career, because I've been around for, like you said, for, for a while now. But uh, Flex, my good friend, <laughs> said, hey man, I met this guy named Chad. I think he can help you a lot. I'm like, really? He's like, Chad yeah, Nichols. man. Yeah, he's like, man, you need to call him. I'm telling you, he's really good at what he do. I've been working with him from now for about a year or two, he said. He said, I really think he can help you. I'm like, well, okay, I'm, you know, I'm like, I Flex me, you're a good friend. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, you've given me a lot of advice in the past, and it all worked out good. So I don't think this guy can really help me, but I'm going to do it because you, know, you said to, to give him a call. So I called Chad. Of course, he didn't call me back. So I called Flex back. I'm like, man, that dude, I called that dude Chad, man. He didn't pick up, and he didn't call me back or nothing. So I'm, 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 I'm done with that. He's like, no, no, man, don't do, don't do that. He's like, he's like that. Just, just call him again. I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> here we go again. I'm like, okay, okay, Flex, you said call him again, I'm gonna call him again. So I called him again, and this time he called me back. Okay. And thank God he did, because like I said, I thought I knew everything. I didn't. I learned a ton from Chad. He, he changed 
everything I was doing. Not just a couple things. He changed everything from my diet, where I trained, the way my nutrition, my car. He changed everything. He 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 doubled my cardio. Mm. He doubled my diet. He kind of like told me, you know how, how to get you know my. Uh, physique a little bit better. He he he, he, uh, he just changed a little bit there, but he changed everything I was doing. Everything he told me worked out perfectly, and I won my first Mr. Olympia. So breaking point was actually hiring a coach. Hiring a coach and being open to the knowledge, even when you think you know everything. Yeah, being open to being coachable, like uh, Corey was saying earlier. You know, they were to. You got to be coachable. Coachable kind of like brightens your horizon and makes you a whole lot smarter because there's always somebody out there who knows way more than you do. But you, no you got to be, are. yeah, yeah. No matter, no matter where you are, you know, how how long you've been training and all this kind of stuff. And 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 that's that's what made me the champion I am today. Great. Being coachable. <laughs> Ronnie, what's your biggest fear right now? You know, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I'm almost 60, and I've been around a long time. And uh, I've always been high on faith. And my faith has never, ever let me down. And like I said, I'm almost 60, so I've been around a long time, so... I don't really have any fears because of my faith. Mm -hmm. Because my faith has never failed me. Never, not even once in my life has it failed me. So, as long as I have that, it's going to be all right. Always. So, I have no fears whatsoever. None. You know, you got to remember, <laughs> I've accomplished a lot, you know, and I've come a long way. I've struggled a lot. I've overcame so many ob obstacles so many times, and it was all because of my faith. So I know for sure by now, <laughs> faith is what got me here, and faith is going to always carry me through. If you had a son, would you let him be a professional bodybuilder if he wanted to? If I had a son or a daughter, I would let them do whatever it was in life that they wanted to do because I've had my life <laughs> and I've lived it the way I wanted to and it's always worked out great and wonderful. So it would be my responsibility to be the same way to them that my mom, you know, and dad were to me. Mm -hmm. They let me make my own decisions and let me do whatever it was I wanted to do in life. And they always supported me and was always by my side. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I would treat my son and daughter let the exact same way. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> always supportive. What is your favorite thing to do when you have uh, time off? Hang with my family. <laughs> with wife my family. and your daughters. My wife and my, yeah, my daughters. <laughs> uh, how often do you get to do that? As often as possible. <laughs> <laughs> you travel a lot and like overseas and yeah, yeah. seminars, all that kind of stuff. And, and so me, they probably miss you all the time. Yeah, so me and my, my, my wife and, and the kids, we, we hang out as much as we possibly can. We go on vacations and we, you know, hang together and, 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 and be together as much as possible. And that is by far my favorite thing to do. Uh, when you competed against Jay Cutler, uh, you guys had some relations. Oh, yeah. He's probably one of your biggest rivals in, the, yep. in your career. Uh, how is it different, your relations back then and your relations now? I'll be honest with you. Me and Jay have all, has all, have always been respectful towards one another, and we've always been good friends. And the reason why we we both know that we don't control 
no decision uh, what goes on once we step on that stage. The judges make all those decisions. It's up to us, you know, to bring the right package mm -hmm. and to be in shape and to, you know, decide how we want to place. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why, you know, like I said, we've always been good friends and we've always been respect respectful toward one another. If we're talking about, like, becoming a champion, do you have to look... Can you actually look back to your, uh, to your life, mm -hmm. to your, I don't know, background, to your health, mm -hmm. or do you have to go all in no matter what? I've always went all in on everything I've ever done in life. I've always given 100% toward everything I've ever done, and I've always for the most part, enjoyed what I've ever done in life. Because I've always felt that even though <clears throat> it may not be meant for me to be a certain person or at a certain uh, stage in my life, I'm gonna find a way somehow or another to enjoy it. Because I know, like I said, as long as I have my faith Everything is always going to be all right when the time is right, mm -hmm. and it always has been. So when I was working for the police department, I gave it 110%, and I enjoyed each and every single day. When I was working for Domino's, same thing. And I didn't particularly, you know, want to be there sometimes. But I figured, hey, if this is what I have to do right now to get where I need to be, this is what I'm going to do right now to get to where I need and want to be. So I've always figured a way to make a way out of no way. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> even though I was doing something that I didn't, particularly want to do, uh, enjoy doing, I, I was going to find a way to figure out a way to enjoy it f for the time I was going to be there. Mm. And I wasn't going to, you know, be depressed or be unhappy about it because I knew it was temporary and I just have to be patient and wait till the time is right because mm. that time is eventually going to come. But you got to believe in that. <laughs> and I've always believed in that. Yeah. Like I said, my faith has it's carried me a long way in life. A long, long way. So thank God <clears throat> I had the upbringing that I did. Because, because that's what uh, molded me to be the man I am today, for the most part. How do you see fitness industry in 10 years? Well, I, I figure as long as the sport is progressing financially, it's only going to get better. When I was winning the Mr. Olympia back in my days, I got $110,000. Now the guys are getting 400000 And next year, they say it's going up to 600000 So as long as it's trending upwards... Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. <laughs> and so uh, I figure in 10 years, it'll be in a better, better place than it is now. Because mm -hmm. th th that's the way it's always been. Who's your favorite uh, young bodybuilder right now? You know what? <laughs> when, when, yeah, yeah. For the most part, I've always looked at certain sports as, you know, what I enjoy about the sport. And the sport of bodybuilding has always been for me, you know, whoever's, because I, I, you know, I'm a bodybuilder and I know what we have to go through and what, what we have to put ourselves through to get our, our bodies in, in, in the condition that it's in. So I just enjoy the sport for, you know, 
what we have to do to get to where we are. So I, I, I really don't have any favorites particularly. I just enjoy the sport itself. The and yeah, and, the, and I have a lot of respect for everybody that competes in this sport because you know what it takes. It's the hardest <laughs> sport in the world. I don't care what you say. You know, boxing is tough. Yeah, basketball, football, all that's tough. But some people well, even yeah, say that bodybuilding is not a real sport. Yeah, yeah, I've heard. What do you say about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I say about that to the person that says that. Go and give it a shot, <laughs> <laughs> and then you can compare it to what you're doing. You you'll see how much of a sport it really ain't <laughs> once you uh, had a, ha, has had a chance to, to see what we go through yeah. to get our bodies in that c kind of condition. Some people call you um, <laughs> Michael Jordan of bodybuilding. Uh, what's your favorite like sports, like NBA, NFL, NHL, uh, that you like to watch or follow? Uh, I would have to say between NBA and NFL are right there, right along with one another. Because mm. I've had season tickets to basketball games, men and women, for the last 20 some, 20 some years. And football, I don't have season tickets, but I, I, I played it, of course, and I wanted to be a professional uh, <coughs> football player. I, I really and truly enjoy it, but you know, as far as just going out to the games like like, like I do in basketball, I, I don't really do that. Mm -hmm. But I still have major love for it, so it's it's kind of hard to, hard to pick between those two. Mm -hmm. But but they're at the top of my list, you know. But I enjoy just about all sports too because I I love the spirit of competition you mm -hmm. know for the most part you know I watch a lot of tennis uh, I'll watch baseball from time to time just 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 those sports right there those are my favorite ones those are the ones that I really keep up with I had to really think about it because I never thought about it before but those are the ones I really keep up with and, and follow religiously <laughs> What do you value the most in people surrounding you? Hard work, Hard work. dedication is what I admire most in all people because I've always worked extremely hard to get to where I want to be. Mm -hmm. And I will always continue to, to do that. You know, I work just as hard <clears throat> with my company as I did when I was competing. Mm -hmm. Probably harder because there were no nights that I <laughs> that didn't get any sleep at all, you know, when I was getting ready for a show or something like that. When I was starting this company, there were many nights that I didn't get no sleep at all because I was, you know, going from appearance to appearance, trying to work out and eat and all that kind of stuff where I just didn't have time to sleep. It was doing all of that and on to the next uh, appearance. And for the most part, it was all well worth it because the company now is, you know, it's still trending upwards, getting better every single year. One of the last questions, what are like three supplements, no matter what brand it is, like three compound supplements for low budget guys, like students or whatever? Oh man, I always try to tell people a multivitamin is always good for you. Number one. Yeah, and then protein, of course, and then uh, creatine. Okay. Those are real. I mean, protein, it, it kind of. Very you can good. replace it with food, like with real meat and eggs and stuff? No, I was about to say it, it, it's kind of expensive, but you know, like I say, it could be a food source also. Yeah. But uh, those are my go-to ones. You know, when I started on supplements, those were the ones I took. Uh, well, you know what? They didn't have creatine. So I, I would have to go with amino acids. Mm -hmm. I took amino acids, protein, and multivitamin. Mm -hmm. The 
got to be the, the top three out there in the world today, even back then, like I said, in, in back then too, because that's where I started with when, that, when I didn't know anything about bodybuilding or nothing, you know, I still did protein, aminos, and, and vitamins, just regular, you know, vitamins. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't even know anything about minerals and all that other stuff, electrolytes, and I didn't know anything about that. How important is it, like alkaline water and stuff? It's now trending, everybody's you know, drinking this pH 9.5 9 water. I, I don't think it's important at all. No. I, I've always, you know, stuck with Basic just water. regular, you know, spring water or whatever, and it's always worked for me. I never did the alkaline, huh? How much did you drink a day? Because I'm from Louisiana and uh, Texas, about two gallons a day. Because it's real hot and it's real humid. And it helped you yeah. digest it, like all these meals that you had to eat. Right? Yeah, I ate six times a day. So I had to. And I, like I said, I did a lot of cardio. I did two hours a day. So I had to constantly. Two hours straight or you had like two sessions? I did an hour and one hour at night, yeah. Nice. yeah. And then you had like uh, weight training in, the be in between. And worked full time for the police department. It's a crazy schedule. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Olympia, and I'm still working full time. Yeah, I go do the show and it's come back. So few people who manage to do that. Uh huh. I'd go do the show and then come back to work. It's crazy. <laughs> so you're a real inspiration. I thank you so much for the time that you spent with us today. No uh, you 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 probably gave millions of interviews. Uh, some of them. I know that you're not very happy with consequences too. Thank you again. No problem, my friend. Such a pleasure. Pleasure is all mine. <laughs> As I say, pleasure is all mine. That's it, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned and big respect to Ronnie Coleman. I'll, I'm gonna leave his uh, social media down below in the description section. Of course, you're all following him, but just to make sure, if you still don't follow him, go and follow the legend. Yeah, buddy. <laughs>